it's fair to say that art can make people look at things in a different way. But did you know our understanding of an exhibition often comes from the way it is put together by those organising it? And there's one team of curators who are in high demand. Art Reorientated have worked on shows from New York to Sydney, as well as here in Istanbul. Things aren't always what they seem at first glance. That's exactly what an exhibition at Istanbul's Arter Gallery is trying to tell us. Ways of Seeing invites visitors to go beyond what they've been told to see in art. Well, the exhibition overall consists of more than 33 artists um, and the idea was to include artists from 1000 BC until the current moment. So one of the main criteria really was to show a huge variety in time, but also in geography. So they're coming from different backgrounds, they work in different media. And uh, the main idea is to really also give by the virtue of what the artworks are, very different ways of seeing or different perspectives on how to access and understand an artwork. Through this exhibition, we would like to invite the viewers to really look at every artwork, take their time to kind of look and look again, and maybe upon a second look, they will start realizing that the artist's way of using materials, of working with compositional elements, alters our perception of what we see. So we think we understand or we know what we're looking at, but when we spend some time with the work, we realize that the artist's use of formalistic elements has manipulated a little bit the image or the object and therefore allows us to reconsider what we know about the world and reconfigure our perception of the things that we encounter. The curators did not let themselves be bound by a certain style or form or media. The key word for this exhibit is variety. The exhibition uh, showcases pretty much the entire um, variety of media that artists work in. We have traditional paintings, we have works on paper, we have photographs, we have video works. We're standing in front of a kinetic sculpture here by Jeppe Hein that is moving, it's a mirror piece. But we also have those artists that actually redefined even what is the medium of art as such. James Terrell is a great example with his light installation. So he doesn't use paint, he doesn't use photography, he uses the actual light, something that we can't see and can't even touch as a medium to create his artwork that physically doesn't actually exist. A Picasso painting propped against the wall, the back of its frame exposed to visitors. Can the back of a famous painting be as exciting as the front? The artist Vic Muniz is trying to bring our attention not to the side that we are usually encountering in any museum. Usually we look at the front of the painting, you know, it's an evidence of the hand of the artist, of the creative genius of the artist. In this case we're looking at the history of the painting in terms of who owned it at one point in time, where has it been exhibited, in which year, in what city. So the idea is to show us the work from a completely different point of view, a way of seeing the work from a different angle that otherwise is not accessible to us when we see them hanging on the walls in an exhibition space. Did it leap out of a dream or a nightmare? This piece was executed under the supervision of Salvador Dali. He's one of the very important protagonists of the Surrealist movement um, and what is really central to Surrealism at large is to take something that is very familiar and put it in a new context, a context that makes us think, what is it doing here? For example, uh, in this sculpture, there is a shoe. We can see an element of a shoe and a lot of other little elements. So things that traditionally you would not see in a museum even, and when they're being put together, they make absolutely no sense in the logical kind of traditional kind of sense. But that is exactly what the surrealists were hoping to do. So they're taking such objects or such images and putting them in a new context so that maybe we don't look at a shoe as a shoe anymore, but as something completely different. Hassan Sharif invites us to think about social roles. His tapestry-like sculpture called Back to School is made of backpacks. And what's interesting is the fact that he's using backpacks made of two colors, blue and pink, which are very much associated with the assigning of gender roles. So the girls have to carry the pink backpack and the boys have to carry the blue backpack. And in this case, he's bringing them all together. And in a sense, he's making a very interesting commentary on the role that these backpacks 
backpacks play as containers of knowledge, as vessels of knowledge. So each one of them represents a child and each child becomes, in a sense, a carrier of knowledge. But by weaving them all together into a sculptural piece that hangs beautifully on the wall, he's probably making a very interesting comment about the collectivity of knowledge, that every person is a unit, in a sense, in a much bigger network where knowledge is constantly shared and circulated um, through maybe assigned roles that he's also trying to criticize. The exhibition is open until mid-August. It reminds us that the connection between what we see and what we think is not a simple one.